Good morning. Welcome back to Something Beautiful. So glad you decided to join us for this broadcast. I want to share a broadcast with you that it's touched my heart because of a conversation I had with a friend of mine. Uh, this actually is a portion of the video that he suggested that I share at the end of the video. He said, uh, do your regular broadcast and at the end just say the, that those who are your regular audience can check out and the, the friends that I play ball with can, can listen to this. But it inspired me to think about, I need to address not only those guys, but I want to speak to you about something that's touched my own heart and maybe touches your heart. Not because of what he said about putting it at the end of the broadcast, but something else that was said in that conversation. He shared with me a statement that uh, got me thinking quite a bit about my own life and about some of you who may be listening to this broadcast and uh, following what our ministry is about. He said he wasn't a very religious guy, but the broadcasts were okay. He was getting something out of them. And I thought to myself at the time that that was interesting, and, and I just couldn't let it go all through our morning of playing ball and uh, when I got home. And so I had to sit down and shoot this uh, broadcast right now while it's fresh in my heart because... He said he wasn't very religious, and I want to share with you that neither am I. I'm not a religious man. I, a, a religious experience is something that uh, has nearly ruined my life more than once, and even in the scriptures, Jesus had words of judgment and criticism and chastisement for those who were religious. I don't believe in religion per se. What I believe in is a relationship with God that changes your life and truly can make it something beautiful. Religion is another set of rules and regulations and legalistic uh, venues through which we uphold a certain set of standards that, that we try to get others to conform to. And as a young person where I was already walking in a place of rebellion against rules and regulations. Nobody was going to tell me what to do. I wasn't going to school. I wasn't listening to those who were in authority over my life. The last thing I needed was one more set of rules and regulations that I had to abide by. But God literally saved my life not by religion, but by relationship, because of the invitation of Jesus to come to him, to follow him, and to find out how he can transform your life. And, and so I started to surrender my life to him and find out that, that it wasn't religion that saved me and it wasn't religion that changed me. It was religion that I was having a hard time with. Jesus said to those who were religious in the day that he was walking the earth, he called them whitewashed sepulchers, broods of vipers. He called them hypocrites. And, and he had heart, his harshest words for those who were the religious of the days because they were putting millstones around the necks of the people who were looking for the transformation that he offers. Jesus even calls our Heavenly Father, Father. Something that really graded the religious of the day because of the relationship that he has with them. He calls them Abba, which means Daddy. And, and so they were really graded by this sense of who is this man who calls Yahweh, Jehovah God, Daddy. And I want to share with you that, that that's what changed my life. Because I was able to establish a relationship with God that began the work of healing my heart that began the work of changing my outlook. I used to believe as a young person, like much of the world, and maybe some of you do, the old expression that used to be found on bumper stickers when I was young, life sucks and then you die. And that's how I lived much of my early years until I came into a saving relationship with Jesus that transformed my life and caused me to become the man of God that God has intended for me to be so that I can hopefully be a blessing and an encouragement to others. So maybe you find yourself on the outside of the church looking in. Maybe you find yourself uh, hurt and wounded by the church or, or by some rules and regulations that authority figures have put over you, be it in family or in the church. I want to encourage you again today with the Word of God. God wants to make something beautiful of your life. He wants to invite you into a relationship with you. 
wherein the scriptures it declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, unlike the love that many of us have experienced from people that we've put our faith in and our trust in and our hope in, God's love is a love that never fails. The hope that we have in God is a hope that never disappoints us. God's intention is to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future, to be able to, if you will, make something beautiful of our life. And that's the testimony of my own life. He did make something beautiful of my life, and, and he's still making something beautiful of my life. Because in the very recent past, within just the last few months, I have had a set of religious people who have sought to destroy my life by basically rejecting the message of Christ and by turning me away from their body, they basically told me that I was unwelcome in their church as their pastor and that they informed me that I was finished there. But God's not finished. And that's what I want to encourage you with. God's not finished with you yet. The Word says that God is faithful and just to complete the work that he's begun in you. So maybe back in your youth you, you knew of God, maybe you were raised in the church and you've been wounded or you've fallen away and you, you just, you've tried church and it's not worked for you because it's anything but something beautiful. What I want to encourage you with today is it's not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus, which is why you need to find a Bible-believing church that truly does life together, living in relationship in the way that Jesus has instructed us to live in relationship, so it will allow for the transformative power of God's Holy Spirit to be at work in you as it is in me and as it is intended that the Word says it would be on all flesh. God's desire is that not even one would perish outside of the knowledge of who He is, without, without knowing the transforming power of His Holy Spirit, about His ability to make something beautiful of your life. And as God makes something beautiful of your life, you know what the good news is? He's going to use you to help others find something beautiful as well. That's the encouragement I want to give you today. God wants to use your life to be able to bless others, to touch others, to minister to others, to care for others, to encourage and to upbuild, to be able to be an instrument of transformative grace and mercy. At one of the most broken points in my life, it wasn't religion that saved me, it was three words uttered to me by a pastor who had heard of my brokenness and, and my fallenness. He said to me, he said, Jeff, if you come here, you will find healing, grace, and rest. And truly, that's what I found there, as he just sought to sow into my life the beautiful truths of God's Word that transformed even the, the inner deep hurt that I was carrying and the thought that I had that was faulty thinking that God must be finished with me, that he had no use for me. So what I want to say to you today is God's not finished with you yet. He has a purpose for your life. His plans and His purposes are not easily thwarted. It doesn't matter that you've fallen. God wants to help to bring you back up to your feet, to transform you, to fill you, to touch you, and to use you to be able to make something beautiful of your life so you can be used by His hand to help others find the saving grace that comes in Jesus. I want to ask if you take a moment to just examine your heart. Is there an area of your life that you've been withholding? Is there a place in your life that you think is so marred, so ugly, and so filled with darkness that you've withheld it from God because you figure God couldn't accept that, He wouldn't want that, and, and there was no way that He would be able to change that part of you because it's just too far gone? Those are the people I want to speak to right now. I want to pray with you. I want to be coming alongside you and encouraging you, knowing that God can transform your life. So if you'll take a moment to just examine your hearts, I want to pray, and I'm just going to invite you to pray again in agreement with me as we pray together. Gracious and Heavenly Father, you who have invited us into a transforming relationship based on who you are, not how good we are or the things that we've done, but Father, just the things that you have done for us and how much you love us. Father, for the one who is listening today, who may not be religious and who has tried church and has found themselves so hurting and so broken and, and, and the church has left them so wanting. Father, would you touch their life right now? Would you let them know that that's not the final word of their life or of their experience with you? That God, you're bigger than all of that. 
that, Father, you call us into a relationship with you that first heals the deep hurts of our heart, that strengthens the inner man that causes us to be able to walk upright, Father, that then causes us to shine forth for you as you work in us, Father, a transforming work of grace, so that others might see that transformation, Father, and see the beauty that comes out of that, Father, and then inquire of us, what is it that you have that I don't have? Father, would you just speak to that one today? Speak their name. Let them hear the invitation, Father, to come into a relationship with you that's based on who you are, not another set of rules and regulations, some authority-bound um, denomination or hierarchy, but upon your saving grace. Father, just minister as only you are able to by the power of your Holy Spirit. And let the transforming grace and power be on display, exhibited, and made known, Father. For we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today on Something Beautiful. I hope to hear from you. If you have any comments that you'd like to share, please respond in an email, a, a text, or a phone call. Uh, just let us know how the ministry is reaching you, affecting you, touching you, or if it's even raising something in you that you disagree with. Hope to see you again next time. God bless you and thank you. In Jesus' name.